Hi, I'm Jonathan. Can you believe it's been a year? This is Scrum is Bad Part 2, or really what I'd like to say is Scrum is irrelevant. I received a little bit of criticism over the last video, mainly to do with the fact that they didn't think I was really really critiquing Scrum itself. I wasn't attacking an artifact or, or a meeting per se. I was attacking a general kind of situation that happens in any team. And since then, there's this kind of division between those that think that there is this dark Scrum mode and then there's Scrum, the ever holy uh, method or framework. And we're going to address that right here now. Okay, so first of all, a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm not here to dictate to anyone. In fact, that is my stance on most things. It depends. There are constraints, there are contexts. We all operate under similar yet different conditions. The disclaimer here is, if you use Scrum and it's good for you, go ahead. I'm not here to tell you to change. From my point of view, I think Scrum is bad. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I wouldn't suggest anybody take it up or move to it. I would recommend people throw it away and choose something else. But that is an opinion and that is something that I hold and you can think for yourself. In fact, I believe so strongly in that when I present a version of a framework for you to follow, it is not saying it is the best and nor is it saying you must follow it. I am not providing it as a certification. You're not going to have to pay me a thing, right? Scrum is part of many methods that are out there trying to get your money. Snake oil. So to summarize the first video, I would say that Scrum creates a, a fertile environment for micromanagement. It creates the environment for cards, cards to be ticked, for you to stand every day and say what you're doing, what you're going to be doing next, or any impediments you may have. It's open view. Others are doing the same. There's this idea that you're self-managing, that your meetings are internal. It's open communication. But really, it's also a way of, I am still working on X. Yes, I'm still working on X. Day three, yes, I'm still working on X. Why are you still working on X? What is the problem there? And now you start discussing. That's part of this kind of idea that you are in an environment that's very exposed. But more than that, more exposure, you're, you're perhaps using something like Jira or perhaps some other technique, but people are monitoring and with burn down, burn up velocity, monitoring what is being done on the sprint, your active participation in that and what is going on. And they're doing it from a data point of view, looking at data, looking at, these estimations and story points and all these things, and they're looking at this and they're coming up with some kind of evaluation and they're basing it on nonsense. The reason why you did this story of eight, right? It, it was you know given a number of eight and this one's given a number of eight. The reason why this took 12 and this one took something else. I mean, these are variables that nobody understands. These are underestimates. It's a group think. The group got it wrong. You got it wrong. You didn't understand something. You had to learn something. But you're constantly focused on whether you did that correctly or whether you know something. And you're also also focused on this value output. So now you have to deliver this value. We've got to send an increment over there. So now people are in a daily stand-up pressurized to tick a card and say move on because they don't want to be embarrassed again on day three. Um, they, they want to tick it off. They want to, they, they have a motivation to tick it off. They have a motivation to cut some corners. Um, mm, let me just tick this off quickly. I, I don't want to stand up again tomorrow. I uh, say the same thing. I'm going to move to some other cards, right? Tick, 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 right? Get it done as quickly as possible. Great, right? However, less thinking, less design, more focus on card, 
more focus on tech. Statistical analysis, what's going on in the sprint? Can we compare it to the previous sprint? What are these story points? Right, velocity. These are all measures to help st instill and place pressure on everyone to tick cards. That is micromanagement. You're not there as a manager, but you are there by proxy. Now, you could say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a strong-minded individual. I, I'm a developer. I say, look, give me room, guys. And I, I've got a thick skin and I don't mind standing up day five saying I'm still busy with it. All right, fair enough. And maybe there is a, a nurturing sort of environment uh, as well uh, mixed in this. Maybe maybe one of the team members is is, uh, is fluent in good communication with you and, and, and says, look, you know, like, I understand. Like, can we do this? Oh, look at that. Oh, I, how, oh, I understand that and so on. And, and uh, you don't have to, like, say, we know what you're busy with and sort of, moves around and, and gives you space and that can happen but that's not part of scrum right that's part of being human i argued in the first video that it creates this conveyor belt and i stand by that it creates a conveyor belt where is the card that says refactor this or this contains technical debt we need to deal with it no it's all product owner user stories you know, some kind of story point, let's just do it, right? And that creates less design and you have to elbow yourself to get design. You have to elbow yourself, thick skin yourself. And a lot of people can't do that, right? So we've got a team that is just focused on getting things out. And that is bad. We want to get things out, but we want to get things out at a good sustainable pace. They use the word sprint. Sprint is sprint. But yet they use the phrase sustainable pace and that just doesn't make sense. The ideas of Scrum and what people confabulate Scrum to be as they are working with it are two different things. Scrum comes almost from a point of arrogance, right? From I have all the answers, these are the events, these are the things, this is what you must do, right? And then you must abide by that. And, and if you change anything, well, don't call it Scrum. Right? And it's got that kind of arrogance to it. But then you've got all these people trying to do very good things in this framework, giving it the benefit of the doubt or the benefit of the doubt all the time. So I stand by video one. Let's get on with part two. Let's look at scrum cons, right? So I'm going to only suggest one, right? There are a number, I'm going to bring up one. There are a number of things that I can mention in this one and I don't want to over, overly complicate. So I'm going to give you one con. And that is Scrum is solving one of the smallest problems, right? So let's look at what it doesn't do, right? We've got many problems. So it doesn't solve developer skills, learning, education, doesn't solve how they do things, right? And what they know, right? It doesn't solve this gap between domain and technical. It doesn't solve communication problems. Uh, it sets up meetings, but you know, if there's a dysfunction in meetings or people or misunderstandings, they will exist. They will exist with or without Scrum. It does not solve that problem. It just creates more communication or more meetings. It doesn't solve designing or coding or technical things. It doesn't solve scalability or anything of that nature. It doesn't solve complexity. It doesn't solve any technical aspects of, of coding. Uh, just because you have a meeting to discuss something and something pops out doesn't you can't credit that to scrum you can talk about anything at any time it's not solving communication problems right meetings are meetings it's not solving it's not creating this kind of um, framework for communication a, a way of approaching communication or how to communicate it, it's not giving you any answers in that what is software development and what are the problems? I said that Scrum is solving one of the smallest problems, right? So let, let's think about it. I think of software development as really three areas. One is technical, right? So we've got all the complexity, design, uh, figuring things out and translating it into software terms, right? So that's all technical stuff. These are developers. This is knowledge. This is skill. This is, you know, testing. This is operations this is all the kind of stuff that falls under technical and then we have user experience and this is 
you know, when, you, when you're navigating through that technical domain as a user, is it good for me, right? Do I enjoy it? Is, is it a good user experience? Does it solve my problems? That, that's, that's another angle. And the, and the third is management, just managing the teams and the people and the features and priorities and decisions of that nature. And if I was pressed to give percentages to those three, I would say the technical is vastly greater than the others. I, I, I would put it at somewhere like 80%. I would say management is like 10% and user experience is like 10%. So Scrum is not solving our biggest problem. And even when it addresses the 20%, it's only really addressing it from a very shallow point of view. You must have somebody to communicate with customers and you must have stories and estimations and so on. And it's really, you know, what we're looking at here, 10%. And if it includes some management and meetings, another 10%. So it's 20%. And these are my percentages, but you can have your own. Uh, this is 20% of that pie. 20% of the problem that it's addressing. And it doesn't address it that well, right? So Scrum is irrelevant. All right, let's look at the JEDI framework. We have JFDI, or otherwise known as JEDI. Can you see what I've done there with that F and E? Right, JEDI framework. Let me zoom in first. So we've got four things. What work is there, right? These are jobs. Right, tasks, whatever you want to call them. Is it the right work? Is it the right work? Should we be doing this? Right? What is the context? Framed. Right? So the work is framed. The context is provided. Number two, have you done it? Well, obviously you now assign it, right? So is it the right work? Once you know it's assigned, somebody pulls it, does it, makes no difference to this framework how you do that. Have you done it is what's important. And that has decisions, right? So you can think of it as decisions on who does it, but you can also think of as, as you're doing it, what decisions you're making, and there will be decisions. So think about those decisions. Next, you, you evaluate it. You have a look in the field, whether those decisions, whether the job framed in that way works out. And if it does, Good. If it doesn't, you can go back and start again. What work is there? In other words, what do we do to refine this? And uh, that's part of the framing. And therefore, we have some decisions to make and we implement and evaluate all over again. And we've got four things, right? So, you know, if I had to think about this for 10 minutes rather than five, um, I might come up with uh, different names or, you know, something like that. But let's not make this complicated. It's a job, it's a task, it's a thing to do. It's just a to-do. You want to keep it on a list? Sure. You don't want to? Fine. Right? It's not my business. You keep track of what you need to do. And if that's each developer keeping track of a bunch of things or you're all doing it, the important thing is to not commit to the list. The important thing is to not make the list the thing you look at. Is it ticked? Is it moved? Is that priority shifted up? What color is it done in red crayon? That's not what's important. It's just a reminder. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. This is what we have on our cards to do next, right? It's a simple to do list. And really, how you do that is up to you. And the framing, well, is it the right work? Well, you know, if you want to get somebody in user experience, if you want to get in a product owner or somebody who monitors and looks at things like that, sure, why not, right? If they've, ex they've got experience and they're giving you some value, sure. Is it the right work to do? So what jobs there are might come from someone, might come from a customer, might come from internal, right? Framing it. Um, why is it necessary? Is it the right job? What's the priority? You have to frame it. Once that's done, you assign it. You only ask the question, is it complete? Right? So we'll go through how we migrate from Scrum to the JFDI or JEDI framework in a second. And you'll see how this correlates with Scrum uh, terminology. To kick the daily stand-up habit, right? So we're moving from Scrum to Jedi Framing. So daily stand-up, how do you kick that? Well, turn it into once a week. Turn it into when necessary. Turn it into smaller amounts of people, contextually speaking, only those that are really involved in this thing. 
and you, you want to move from a daily to when it's really required. Now, how do you evaluate that? Well, very, very simply put, if the team needs focus and everybody together on something, bring it in, do a stand up, do a stand up the next day. You don't need to do it anymore. Stop. It's not something that should become a ritual, right? You use it to your advantage when required, right? When is it, when is it required? Well, probably way less than you think, way less, right? At moments in a point of crisis, let's pull together guys. We've got two days. Let's get this out. Let's all get together. I want to know what's going on every morning. You can do that. You're not micromanaging if it's a day or two or a week, right? But if you sustainably do that, well, now it's changing the whole nature of how you're working. Right. So kick the habit from daily and move to when needed. Backlogs. Now, in the new Jedi framework, there's this to do, right? The jobs. Well, you can clone the backlog. You can continue with that backlog. But for heaven's sake, do away with all the focus that you place on it. Right. Stop taking it as the definitive. Stop looking at it and marking it with green and red and writing comments and doing and prioritizing and moving. Have you checked the list? Have you checked the list? Right. Don't make it so important. Dumb it down a bit. Right. Make it simpler. Right. Put put little points on what you're doing. Make it way simpler. Don't, don't be so don't be despaired if a different developer has a different list. Right. Doesn't matter. Are they doing what you need them to do now? Can you give them and feed them other jobs to do later? Right? Do you have a little list that you're keeping track of? Sure, keep track of it. Don't commit that to everyone else. Right? Nobody needs a complete list of everything you're thinking all the time. It's just clutter. Right? So you want to move from taking a backlog, sprint backlog, and all these kind of things. Move to just a simple to-do list and then keep other lists private and bring it to the team only when required. Keep something that's active, right? You want to use Kanban or something? Sure, go ahead. Who cares, right? It's a simple list. Keep it simple. Next is you've got this product owner and, and scrum master role. So let's see how we can morph these. Well, let's make the product owner more useful with deliverables. Can you upskill them? Can they become a graphics designer, user experience person? How can you use them, right? I'm not in favor of just firing people and saying you're not needed and all that. So let's try and upskill. Let's get them in the team. But what's important is that they're actually delivering value themselves, right? And clear cut value. They communicate with the customer and they're doing the experience. They're doing the wording. They're doing business analytics, right? They're doing all those kind of things. They're looking at the market, right? Fair enough. They do that. They're valuable to you. Keep them, right? But let's try and get them on the team. Let's try to get them in the team, right? Look at a customer, bring the customer into the team. Don't shield, right? Nobody wants to be shielded. I want to know what the customer's thinking. And I think every developer should know. There'll be one or two that don't really like talking to customers. Fine. Let them sit over there and, and let that guy go and do it. But the customer needs to look and talk and see inside the team. If you don't see inside the team, it, it's just these layers of abstraction and it just gets in the way. And the Scrum Master, well, personally, I think you can send them off to some sort of digital transformation uh, exercise, you know, put them somewhere else. Let, let them sort of look at digital transformation across the business and uh, remote robotic process automation. Oh, they'll love it, right? They'll love it. They'll, they'll in their element, right? If they're software focused, they're actually an architect and or a developer in previous, get them hands on again, right? Get them learning the stuff, get them in there. If they've got architecture or that kind of skill, get them, get them be, be that sort of pragmatic architect, that hands-on guy in there advising the team of a bit of design and architecture, but get them hands-on, right? Rename Sprint to just working, working, right? So uh, you can say, well, I'm working on it. Somebody can say, well, uh, I'll do it after I've done this thing, right? Um, it's in the pipeline, right? I'm just working on it, right? I'll be done when I'm finished with it, right? So just working okay so we don't need this sort of idea of a start and an end or, or you know just you know i'm working on this thing and now i'm working on this thing 
right? I'll work on that thing next. That's all you need to know. Definition of done. Well, it becomes done, right? If somebody does something that's done and you think it's not done, send it back and say, please do it more done. <laughs> Who cares? It's done or it's not done. That is what's important. And the standard of your company, right, doesn't need a big term. You don't need to define definition of done. You just need to educate your team into what the standards and the quality and all that kind of stuff is and just work. Just do it. Retrospectives become, hey, pop me a message if you have any information about, you know, what we've been doing and whether we can get any improvement. Just send me a message, right? Uh, if it's bigger than that and you think that there needs to be a drastic improvement in some way, uh, talk to me. We'll, we'll call some little, you know, 15 minute meeting. You can have a pitch. Why not? Right. You don't need this kind of psychological retrospective. You know, you just need an open door. Right. Uh, for people to walk in and say, hey, by the way, this is what I'm thinking. Right. That's all you need. Burn down chart, burn up chart, those kind of things. Velocity, delete. James, you're good. Right. And what's up with you, James? I've noticed a bit of a slump. Everything OK at home? OK, don't get that personal. Right. It's how you want to deal with your your employees. But really, velocity is nothing. It's bullshit. What you want is just to be friendly with your team. Know your team. Know what's going on. Right. Deal with things. Right. Just help. Just be part of it. Don't hide behind numbers and try and get some kind of velocity and then apply it to people, right? And just, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it's a ridiculous thing. So we throw that away. The review, like the sprint review. Well, that's another, like when you have something to say, just like bring it up, right? My door is open. That's it, right? That's it. Just carry on with what you need to do. You do your work. And then when it's done, we deploy, we evaluate, we come back again, we have jobs, we do it, we, you know, that's all it is. Now, Scrum is about 30 terms, right? All these artifacts and all these things. Uh, we have four, four stages, four steps. They're very quick. There's no duration limit. There's no understanding of when it should happen. There's no reviewing. There are no meetings, right? How do you communicate? Just talk, right? Should be asynchronous. Don't care. Use all of it. Right. Use what you need. If it's too much communication, somebody say. If it's too little, somebody say. Right. There, there's, you know, there's no right way. Just find what works for your team. Right. And really, these these things, if you look at JFDI, these things mean jobs, framed, decisions, implement. Right. Or otherwise known as just fucking do it. <laughs>